If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try this on your own before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a picture that represents the information stated in the question. So we've first drawn a set of coordinate axes and we've placed the boatman at his starting position at the origin. The river is three feet wide, so we've come over here to three and drawn a vertical line. And then traveling up that vertical line, the boatman wants to land two kilometers upstream. So essentially he wants to reach the point whose coordinate would be three comma two. We note that the river or the canal is flowing downward in this picture. And what we're trying to figure out is what direction he actually needs to steer so that as he moves, the position that he ends up at will be three comma two. So we're essentially looking for this angle here. Now for a moment, we're going to assume that the water is still. And if that were the case, the boat would actually move directly across the river in this direction. And what we want to do is find the components of that velocity vector. And we can see there's two components. There's the y component that would point straight up here, and then there is the x component that would point straight across the canal. Now we can see that the x component is opposite to the angle that we have marked theta. And so we can label that x component the velocity times the sine of the angle. We're using the sine because this x component is located opposite to the angle. The y component is adjacent to that angle, so we can call that component v cosine of theta. And so using vector notation, we can write the velocity of the boat in the following manner. We're going to have the x component followed by the y component. And the question notes that the speed of the boat is 13 kilometers per hour. So we can actually plug 13 in for these v's right here. Now let's consider the velocity of the current, which we can indicate with this blue vector right here. It's pointing straight down. And because it's pointing straight down, the x component of that velocity would actually be zero and therefore there would only be a y component, we note that the speed of the stream was 3.5 kilometers per hour, but because it's pointing downward in the negative y direction, we're going to actually write negative 3.5. So we have the velocity vector of the boat and then the velocity vector of the current. The overall motion is going to be the sum of those two vectors. So we can come over here and write that the overall velocity is going to equal the VB plus VC. We can then substitute in for VB the vector that we developed earlier and then the same thing for VC. And then we can actually simplify the sum of these two vectors. And to do that, we can add the X components. So 13 sine theta plus zero is going to remain 13 sine theta. And then 13 cos theta plus the negative 3.5 is going to be 13 cos theta minus 3.5. So this vector is the overall velocity of the boat as it travels across its true course over the canal. We next want to note that the overall position of a moving object is going to equal its velocity multiplied by its time. Now, the position that we're seeking is three comma two. So we can say that three comma two is going to equal the velocity times the time. What we'll do is substitute in our expression for velocity into this equation right here. And we'll come down here and do it. So we'll say that the position of three comma two will equal the velocity multiplied by the time t. And in essence, we are allowed to distribute that time t. So we're going to distribute it to the x component of the vector and then distribute it to the y component as well. And so now what we can do is actually set the x component of the position equal to three. And what we'll do is solve this equation for time by dividing both sides by 13 sine theta. So now we have an expression for the time. We're gonna hold on to this expression 
And next what we'll do is set the y components of the position equal to each other. And so here we have done that. Remember we had just solved for the time t in terms of theta, so we're going to make a substitution here where we replace the time t with 3 over 13 sine theta. And then what we want to do is distribute that 3 over 13 sine theta. And then after performing that distribution, what we can do is clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by 13 sine theta. And so the left-hand side is going to become 26 sine of theta. And then when we distribute the 13 sine theta, it's going to actually cancel out with those denominators. So we'll have 39 cos theta minus 10.5. Next, we'll go ahead and square both sides of this equation. So here we'll have 676 sine squared of theta. And then for this, don't forget that you have to write it out two times and then FOIL it out. Now, we can replace sine squared using a trigonometric identity. We know sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of theta. The right-hand side will remain the same. We could then distribute the 676. And then what we want to do is gather all the terms over to one side so that we have the equation equal to zero. The reason we have to do that is because we have a quadratic here. So we're going to add the 676 cosine squared over to here and then subtract 676 over to there. And now that we have it in the proper form, we're going to use the quadratic formula where we have a, b, and c. So the quadratic formula is going to allow us to solve for theta. And so we've set up the quadratic here. And we're going to go ahead and solve for cosine theta, so if we carefully punch that into our calculator, we obtain these two values after plugging that in. And what we'll do next is take the inverse cosine of both of these values, and that's going to give us two angles. We'll note that when we do the inverse cosine of this value here, we're going to get an obtuse angle. Going back to the picture, we do not want an obtuse angle. We want this acute angle here, the angle that's less than 90 degrees. So we'll only take the inverse cosine of this value. And when we do that, we get approximately 43.4 degrees. So this would be 43.4 degrees from the canal bank and directed upstream. And so this is the final answer for part A. For part B, we need to simply calculate the time required. Fortunately, we've saved this equation over here. So we're just going to plug in the 43.4 degrees in for theta to get the time. And so when we plug that in, we're going to get 0.336, and that will be measured in a unit of time of hours. And then, of course, if you need to convert that into minutes, you can multiply by 60, and you would get about 20.2 minutes. And so here is the correct answer for Part B.